Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. Is that a bit better? Are you guys getting anything now? Um, okay, yeah. Okay, so OBS is now saying... Thanks, guys. Sorry about that. Right, so what I was just saying was... I'm a little out of sorts at the moment. I'm a little disorganized, as you can tell. <laughs> I couldn't have proved it any better. Um... So, once again, I will say hello to you folks, Freemans, Darius, D uh, Jace, Electrical Skateboard, um, Michael, Roger, Sorted August, and Oglestraxi, good to see you all. Um, we're going to hack away some more on um, what we are working on last time. I've just disabled that uh, alien spawning because we're not really too interested in that right now. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look again at some of the animation stuff. Uh, Love like Simtex, good to see you. You just missed me being a Muppet. Also managed to miss uh, me getting a phone call during the stream, which is excellent. So uh, I'm glad that wasn't picked up on sound. Not that it was important anyway. Um, so, yes, a little bit more animation. Um, and then I really want to see just how many actors we can get on screen before it starts lagging. And then optimize some rendering stuff. Um, and all we'll do basically is we'll turn on instancing, we'll make a buffer to store all the information about the instances, and we'll just, instead of instead of doing a draw call every time, we'll just write into that buffer, and then we'll send off one draw call and do all these things. That's going to have us run into some interesting uh, cases, because we are going to want to set uniforms like the sprite sheet, um, and we won't be able to change that per instance. So we're going to want to batch these things together. Um, there's another part of the optimization as well. Basically, I'm going to have it that if you... Let's get over to this machine. If you have an actor without any code in it, that's a static because it can't move. Um, wherever you spawn it, it's going to stay. It's got no other information. So we should put those into a separate array and we'll batch all those together. And that'll be really good for um, scenery and things like this. And this is uh, this is gonna is what is going to allow us to have everything be actors, just absolutely everything. Is um, separating these into batches and only having a few, well, a low number of draw calls. Yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. Enfiano is saying, "What did I miss last week? We actually got a fair bit done last week, didn't we? We did a." Uh, stuff with game pads so got this guy all set up now and i can shoot and i can use the trigger to move around uh, it's got the worst controls ever at the moment but that's okay we'll get back to that another time uh, let's move him down here um one of the issues we found out once we added this was that because all of our rotations and vectors and things like this are um, are based on which direction the actor is facing, it becomes much harder to do simple things like simple Newtonian physics. So, like, you you normally would have um, like a, a velocity vector, and then you would like add your directional vector plus some, like, you know, multiply by some scalar onto that, and that will give you nice sliding behavior, and you apply a bit of friction to that. Everything feels great, but you don't, you can't do that as easily uh, with this model. So we're going to need something else. Um, to make that simple. What I think we'll do is just have the ability to set angles like a compass. So then you'll have world space um, direction, which is something we didn't want originally. We said no world space anything, but we found a case where it just makes life too much harder. Um, Sorted August is saying OpenGL has a uniform buffer, though I've never used it. Maybe it can be useful. Yes, exactly. We've got UBOs. Um, we will have a look at what we can do as far as samplers and UBOs, because I've never done that before. Um, one of the other things we can do is use a sampler array. Um, so, like a texture array. So, then we can shove all of our textures, all our uh, sprite sheets in there, but that probably has some restrictions on sizes. They probably all have to be the same size. Um, so that won't work for us. There's a few other things like that. But we will uh, we'll have a look. We'll see what the limitations are, and we'll go from there. So let's start with the simple stuff. We had uh, spawn dead shuttle. Oh, doesn't like it. Oh yeah, of course, because I need to quote that name. 
Okay, so this is also what we did last week. We allowed ourselves to... Um, where are we? Load to set the visual to be um, an entire sprite sheet. And then we were able to specify a tile count. And so if we change this, this should work. We should be able to do this. And we can see that... Um, yeah. It, it, it's fairly obvious what's going on there. We're just using the sprite. What I'm surprised about there is that the... Uh, that's what I'm surprised about. The, the the scaling was strange. Huh. Yeah, that's the size I expected it to be, which is exactly the same size as this in pixels. But then we set it to 4.4, and it starts off at the same size and then goes down. I wonder what that is. It's interesting. I don't want to fix that bug right now, but that is a bug. If someone wants to file that as an issue on our repo, actually, which is just daft on my uh, GitHub account, that would be really cool. And we'll get back to that one. Um, all I want to do now is we've currently got advanced frame and next frame. Um, it would be kind of cool to be able to next frame across a range or next frame, uh, yeah, to, to do that kind of stuff, specify ranges. Um, which we start with coffee. So, how should we do that? Well, I want to say, let's uh, bring up our little API again. So, um, API, actor API, and next frame, here we are. It would be cool if I could specify an optional range. And so what we would do is we would say like this would have to be the structuring bind. How should we do this actually? We could just have it be a um, a pair which specifies the first frame and then the number of frames. That would be a very simple way to do it. Um, and that works quite nicely with our sprite sheet as well. By the way, I'm not going to be including this sprite sheet in the repo for a while because this is from another project that I want to I want to do another time. Uh, that will eventually be out there in open source, but it's kind of just like it's it's completely on the back burner at the moment. But we can't, if like, someone else has got some other sprites laid out in a uniform grid, we can use those. That's fine. Um, Fanio, uh, Mefiano, sorry, is saying uniform buffers have a lot of limitations. Um, usually they're not even worth using. Oh, I don't know. They're pretty awesome. But, um, but yeah, they do have a bunch of limitations. Um, yeah. I'll uh, see where my my brain is just not working for me right now. It's like, hey brain, what's the information about UBOs? No, 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 you're not having any. Fuck. Right. So, um, let's actually we'll do the range version separately for now, and then we'll merge them together once we know what the common API is. So next frame range specify a range. We'll destructuring bind it. Uh, we'll take the start frame. And the anim length from that, from range. We will... Pardon me. Shall we do it like this, actually? What we could do is just say... No, we'll, we'll do it this way first, then generalize. Okay, so then we need to know what frame we're currently at. That's this one. We no longer need anim length because we're working over a range. Um, we want to set the anim frame to be... Um, anim length can stay the same. So what we could do is subtract the start frame from the anim frame, um, mod that on the anim length, and then just add the 
um, start frame again. That's very simple. Um, so we could start by doing that. So let's take anim frame. Um, Where should we put that? Should we put it here? Let, let's start here. So let um, frame be anim frame minus uh, start frame. And then frame plus one mod over the animation length. Um, we then add back the start frame. And set the anim frame to be that. Will that work? Probably. Well, let's see. Let's uh, go to our walking animation. And so we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, so 4, 5, 6, and 7. So we can start at 4, basically. Um, where's our advanced frame? So we're going to do instead, we'll start with next frame. And that's just going super fast. And that's fine. Um, what we're going to do instead is we're going to set the next frame oops, range, starting at frame four and going for four frames, I guess. Whoops. Valid number of arguments, two. Oh, yes, we didn't. That's not the API. We passed in a list. Um, and I'm getting more calls from random countries. Thing is, by the, before I get to answer it, it hangs up. It's really shitty. I don't, again, like, and it's from a bunch of different countries, so obviously, like, it's got to be some kind of shitty scam, but I don't get it. I don't, I don't get what the deal is. Um, we will see. We will see. I need to call my phone provider and find out about that. Unless any of you have had the same thing and know what it's about, because that would be really cool. Uh, I picked the worst possible uh, row to use, seeing as these ones haven't been animated yet. Um, I should use these ones. So, um... So yeah. Okay, but that is not... Oh, it actually might be advancing. I just think it's going way too fast. Um, what we'll do... Just to test this. And then I've got to see what um, is being said in the chat. Hmm. Yep, I'm doing something stupid. I just know it, but I... It's going to take me a second to see what it is. Let's see what's going on over here. Afiano is saying, um, SSOs are the upgrade but require 4.3 instead of 3.3. Yeah. And, I mean, and they're writable. And so generally, they're, like, it is expected that SSBOs are going to be slightly slower um, access wise than UBOs might be um, so they're not always the right choice over a UBO if you don't have a, a large amount of data I think UBOs um, guarantee up to like I think it's like guaranteed like 64k or something like this whereas SSBOs guarantee like megabytes I can't remember I need to go look that up actually um, uh, Fiona's saying Jason and I did a lot of a lot of work, recent work with UBOs and SSB ah SSBOs um, when we wrote the shadow library on top of Vario. Very cool. Right, nice to know that's going well. Oh yeah, by the way, dude, I've been adding. I'm starting to add a bunch of just regular old. Um, I basically, I'm, I'm going through the common list spec and I'm taking every function that's low hanging fruit and I can possibly add to Vario, and I'm just starting to throw them in. Um, yeah, um, SSBOs are it's, it's saying SSBOs are only limited by, by VRAM. Generally, yes. Generally, the implementation will provide you the entire uh, like uh, GPU's address range. That isn't actually required by the spec. They do have a minimum um, requirement, but it is large. Uh, Brimmons is saying it's a phone scam where they want you to call them back on a paid expensive number where they try to keep it in hold for a while. Oh, fair enough. That makes sense. But, I mean, it just couldn't... I couldn't imagine that that was working so frequently because I get, like, a few of those a day now. 
It's it's ridiculous at the moment. Um, it's a little confusing as well because there's a, a bunch of countries I know folks in. So you've got that moment of, oh, fuck, is it? Especially if it comes from a Ugandan number, then I really want to pick it up. But oh. it's very rarely them, actually. It's a bunch of other countries. Um... Nogla Straxia is, is saying the same thing. Yeah, they expect you to call back and they will charge you a large sum of money. Well, fuck those people. Okay. Let's see what I fucked up down here. Because it's gonna be something. Gonna be something. So. Um, we took the frame. Um, and we subtracted the start frame. So, whatever frame we're currently on... Um, we minus the start frame, so in this, like, we minus 8, um, and we're going to add that 8 back again here. And then we're going to add a little bit to our our frame, we're going to mod against the anim length, and then we're going to add the start frame back, and we're going to set it to be a float, which should be fine, um, but it is not. It's almost like I'm doing a floor somewhere, like right fucking here. Um, there we are. Okay, so now it's animating. Um, sweet. Okay, so that, that, that's what that was. Uh, that makes sense. And it also makes sense to have that for um, next frame as opposed to um, advanced frame, which has an amount. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to look at the chat again. Um... Sword of Dog say, so UBOs can't be updated unless you resend the entire buffer. No, that's not actually correct. You can do buffer sub data, but you can't write to them from a shader, whereas SSBO is allow you to write from the shader. Mefiano um, um, is saying that, and UBOs are too small to do useful things, especially with the standard 140 packing schemes. Uh, SB, S, SSBOs can use the standard 430 for much less weighted space. Very true. Um... What I will eventually add with Keppel is um, support for, uh, what do they call it? Uh, sparse spineless textures. And then basically you're able to kind of build your own allocator <laughs> out of texture memory. Um, and you decide what pages are resident in GPU memory and all that kind of stuff. Because the virtual address space is much larger on the GPU than there's actual memory. So you can do a lot of cool shit then. But that is very, very kind of 4.5 features. Um, and I haven't started on those yet. And there's a few of those which I'm really excited to get to. Um, but right now I want to make Vario better and everything a bit more stable. Um, especially seen as uh, folks like Mafiano is using it. I've had, I, I've had a couple of issues reported on compute shaders, which is fucking great. I mean, it means that it was broken, but it also means that someone was using it, which is really nice. I've had like two different issues there. So woo! Tiny niche thing being used. Right, nice. So, let's do this. Um, let's now set, let us make range optional. I'll say let um, start frame be if range first of range, otherwise um, it is going to be whatever it was before. What were you? Anim length. It's a bit jacky because we get two conditionals, which is a bit shit, but... Um, trust the compiler. Right, anim length is going to be if range, second range, otherwise it's going to be the slot value. Um, oh wait, what? No, this is going to be zero. And this is going to be anim length. Bum, bum, bum. Yes, yes. No longer need this. Don't need this. Need to wrap that around there. What is this? Self is not a variable. There we go. 
And this one, and in frame, yes, we now need to wrap that in the slot value self, and in frame. And it doesn't know what it is there. Ooh, okay. Oh, wait. We do still need anim frame. Okay. Well, if it's used in two places, let's add it back to with slots. Okay. So that's now next frame. Um, so we should be able to change this back to... Uh, next frame and it's hard to tell if it's working or not let's just remove this why do I get the feeling that we're not actually got any life there did I kill it no so why are you not working 11.1 that does not sound good <laughs> um, What did I just do here? Oh, we're back in our, um, what? Back at our same issue again. I've got that 0 0.1 there and that's better. That's what we should be getting. And then we're going to go and update advanced frame to use the same kind of scheme. What we're going to do is do this. Um, oh, yeah. Let's uh, highlight it first. We remove the floor and add the amount. And the and optional range. We should be able to take out this, replace it with that, and... It's still going, which is good. And now we can add in, say, 8 by 4. And now it's just going to be walking right all the time. Go a little off a go. And again, by 12. I've been walking away. Nice. Sweet. Okay. That's uh, pretty much wanted, what I wanted to do. By having this as something simple like this, we can just stick it in our local variables. And then we can switch between them based on either the state or some other variable. So that's um, that's that. Um, for either you can attach a subset of the buffer for the binding point. Wait a second. So. Oh yeah, I mean you could you can you can bind just part of the buffer for sure. You can also update any part regardless of the binding because you'll bind the buffer object and then you should be able to make changes wherever. Like you you've got that whole range. Unless I'm reading that incorrectly, but anyway, this is um this is what we needed. So, don't stash that and we will Oh yeah, I had some fuck ups that I fixed. Oh no, so this actually probably wasn't a problem. I was panicking, well panicking, I was fucking about during before the stream because I couldn't get controllers working again and then I found out that I just hadn't clicked the P, the, the uh, PlayStation button on the controller, so no, it wasn't working, Chris. Smart, smart, smart. So we probably don't need any of these changes um, except load DB. That is a good idea. In fact, th this is all right, though. This is not a bad idea. Like, we can, we can keep those in there as well. I want to do that as a separate commit, though. Let's, um, let's get that out. Let's do it in order, then. So what have we got? We have some changes to the test. We have some define actor changes. Oh, so this actually was a bug. Okay, so fix bug where? Um... To access nil visual, or null visual rather. God triggered this. It was an act of God. Okay, and then we want to do this one, which was uh, minor improvements to gamepad support. 
<laughs> support. Kind of just hammering on a couple of functions and hoping everything's okay. Um, and then we add animation of ranges. Good. That's gone. Let's let's do a bit of a stress test. So we will get rid of a lot of this. Um, keep that guy. Get rid of this. And we will just use the shuttle. Oops. Yeah, it's our crappy shuttle. And I think that's probably all we need right now. Hacky test. Right. So we're going to loop for, yeah, 1,000, and we're going to spawn um, this, which is going to call the foo. Um, we're going to spawn a whole lot of foos at random positions. Let's just go and nuke the uh, actors we've currently got around. Um, so, hey robot, um, as you, you're going to die. And um, same for Jesse. Cool. We are going to spawn at a random position. So, uh, that's going to be... We don't have, like, back to RAM, do we? No. Um... Let's do this over 300, I guess. Um, yeah, for a range of 300. Make sure that's a float. Minus 150. Um, okay, so we got a whole bunch there. Um, and we're also going to fuck about... Um, accessing things we shouldn't be able to. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that the um, position of self... What am I doing? Is... Um, we do for this actually what I'll do is I need a way of getting rid of all these guys so be fun hacky kill and it's gonna be um, loot for actor in current actors we're gonna go when it's type of uh, foo, we're just going to say as that actor die. We should be able to do this now. Happy kill. Nope! <laughs> it is in the list. That is very true. This should be a cross and not in. Um, well, that's interesting as well. We don't seem to be running. So that's uh, that shit. We need a better way of... Um, being able to tell that. Well, we're running now. 
Uh, let's do a hacky start. Hacky test. That's a good point as well. I think we're going to run out of names soon. Because that, that names thing was cute. But uh, yeah, we haven't got many left. Um, so we should probably just look quickly at what happens when we run out of those. Um... Actually, we could just gen sim, can't we? <laughs> Keep track of this. A name that we can't possibly use. Hooray. Okay, so um, that'll do. Um, what now? These aren't proud moments, but they are effective ones. Okay, so let's do hacky test again, because we need to make sure we can make a whole bunch of them. There's a load of gen sims. Ah, we're gonna hack kill them all, um, and they're gone. Good. Okay, so we've got to start there. When we spawn them, um, we're also going to. What do we do? Direction is v2 uh, negate position. We're gonna need this to be a let's star. Um, and then we're gonna v2 normalize that. And then we've got a direction. This guy is gonna take a direction. Was that the syntax? I can't remember. Let's try it anyway. Um, and then it should be when we spawn a foo, uh, we should just be able to pass in deer like this. Didn't like that for some reason. Oh yeah, because we got to pass in a position. And we haven't wrapped the letter around, which is like my favorite mistake. So, hacky test, bam! Okay, that is, nil is not one of those. That's true. <laughs> um, why are you trying to, oh. Did I? We done fucked up some stuff. So let's have a look why. So where is direction? I'm, that might be something defined on this. Um... Oh, Jesus. Okay, this is this is why. We've done the set F nil here, and I haven't been looking at it. Whoopsie doo. So, hack kill, and then we're going to have to run again because we've probably killed all this stuff. Hacky test. They all got spawned in the same place? I don't think so. What happened to the other, th the rest of the thousand? There's a whole lot of them there. Um, huh. What are the odds? Very low. Um, what have I done? Where are you? Position. Where is position? Why can't I read right now? Uh, direction. Wait a second. That's a bit odd. No, okay. No, that's what we passed in. That was our... Um, that was a field. Oh yeah, it's in public state, isn't it? Public state. 63, 64. Sure. Um, wait a second. Let's map a list over these guys um, grabbing their positions. Oh, God, yes. Okay, okay. I've made a slightly annoying API. Quite an annoying API, Chris. It's quite annoying. Right. Well, these look the fucking same. <laughs> what have I done? Oh, fuck. Oh, of course. I'm not even... Did I mention I was feeling a bit strange? Let's, uh... Let's pretend that didn't happen, except for the fact I recorded it for posterity. Everything's going so well. 
This is why you read the code. Do we have a time function? Like now? Yes, we have now. Good. So, we are going to do uh, vector two scaled by now. Uh, no, <laughs> not by that at all. Um, the sign of now, we are going to add some distance. So, let's say 100. Ah, 300. There we go. Um, we're going to take the direction and we're going to scale that and we'll just see what happens. So, it thinks the direction is nil. Boo! The value nil is not of type symbol ray float to, so yeah, it's not a vec2 uh, when binding vector a. Oh, this is just in, oh. This apparently is nil. Even though this isn't giving us the arguments because the optimization settings are a bit high for that. Um, why is direction nil though? All of these should have a direction because Nope, but look at that. Deer is nil. Sucks to be that guy. Very interesting, though. How did that happen? Uh, so, let's uh, kill this again. Where did you come from? Hold on. All these guys are still in there, and I just said, kill. And they're all still there. Oh yeah, because you need another step to be able to die. Ah, fuck you. Um, We don't really need to kill him. This will be fine. I think that's alright. I don't think we have any other state stuff that we do while doing this. We'll soon find out. Um, Darth start. Yes. Ah, fuck, of course. Not an array with a fill pointer. You cannot do that. So... <laughs> Read the, st read the stream. Read the stream. Um, and Fiano is saying GL bind buffer base and GL bind buffer range is what, range is what I was talking about. Absolutely, that makes sense. Yep. Um, <laughs> Love like Sentex tried to move my cursor out of the way. Sorry for leaving it in the wrong place. Um, Sorted of August is saying this is the Kowloon walled city made of, <laughs> made of aircrafts. Oh, yeah, that place is. Has that been torn down now? I'd love to go there. I mean, I'd love—I mean, I'd love to see it. It's just such a such an edifice. It's fucking crazy. Um, I think my partner was there when he was about two or something. Maybe a little older. Oh, right, it must have been about yeah, it must have been about five, I guess. Um, sort of dog saying, yeah, it's gone. Boo. Uh, just Jensen with a person's name and the prefix argument to Jensen. Mm. Either way, the name becomes a bit useless when it's a Jensen regardless, just because then you can't say it. <laughs> you can't make that, that thing. All I need to do is when things get destroyed, they should give their name back. But, um, yeah. <sighs> right. Okay, so, um was a reason for doing it like this. Ah, but this doesn't do it the way I want to do it. Okay, um... Uh, 
dead. Oh, this is the actor API? Yeah, we need to go back to act. Is it in daft or it be an actor? It's gonna be an actor, isn't it? When they're dead. Oh man. That's interesting actually. This is just a bit just a bit janky. This will kill God, but never mind. Current access is now empty, so we don't have God, but we're not actually using him for anything right now, so that's actually what we can do. Is, um, that was that. You can just do this. Oh, it's suitably hacky. So if we do a hacky test again, hacky sack. Is that because of... Hold on. Oh yeah, we have to kill first and then test. What the shit? What is this pushing into? Oh, it's going to be pushing into the other one now, isn't it? Ah! I don't want to think about this right now. I just want to carry on. Um, it spawned a whole bunch of things. Apparently it started. And that's what cleared that. Okay, gotcha. So we're gonna hack a test. Whole load of them. That freaks out. Um, valid index two. Interesting. Yes, because positions aren't done like that. For fuck's sake. Um, let's do this. Incorrect number of components for vector one. <laughs> what are you on about? Where's that coming from? I guess that's what we have it for. But let me just keep on uh, killing and restarting. Actually, we don't need the kill scene as a start just goes and does it for us. So. Oh, there we go. Cool. So, we have a thousand of them. Huh. That's running better than I expected. I mean, it's a tiny resolution, and it's only a thousand draw calls, so it's not really that bad. Uh, but it is swapping the, some uniforms on every single thing. Okay. That means God will be back in the mix as well, I guess. Um... Is God around? No. Well, we can spawn him anyway. Spawn. God. There we go. God's there. And then we'll uh, we'll screw around with this some more. So what we're gonna do here is just do an FPS camera. F. Uh, Makes ever four seconds. Seconds. One. Um. Frame start. Oh, what is it? Oh, 
Oh yeah, let's just do this. Um, zero. It's so bad when there's like simple things you just start brain farting on. It's super annoying. Anyway. When it's the, when the stepper, which means there's been one second since last time, uh, then print the work in progress. Uh, actually, let's um, just keep an FPS. FPS is zero. Set F. FPS is the work in progress set and uh, set the work in progress as zero. Saying it's undefined. Fuck you, buddy. Yeah, and we, I, I would expect it to be locked at 60 right now. I think there is something in SDL2 that I've got for unlocking uh, the sync. Let's have a look. Sync. No. No, not in SDL2. Ah, idiot. In Keppel SDL2. What's really strange, and this is why I haven't actually looked into this yet. Ethan P. Morgan, afternoon users. Hello, sir. Um, for some reason, on SBCL, when I start up SDL2, I get it locked to, I guess, to VSync or something like that. Like, it's locked at 60 FPS until I unlock it. it but if I start it in CCL, it's unlocked from the get-go. What I do not get. What are you? Kevl to SDL2. Sync. Oh, there we go. VSync is on T. Yep. So if we do this, okay, that made fuck all difference. That's interesting. Oh yeah, we're at 120, 425. Okay, so yeah, that's where we are. Let's get this to be slow because we want something that we can start optimizing. So let's say around 3,000. Hacky. Oh yeah, we don't actually not gonna. We'll do this. We will say. Um, uh, stop. Uh, stop. That didn't get rid of everything. Well, fuck you, buddy. Fair enough. We do need old hacky kill then. Okay, so now we're struggling a bit. That's good. That's what I want to see. So now we look at uh, FPS. Still saying 123. Why do I think you're lying? Oh yeah, it's because God isn't here anymore. Spawn, God, hello. FPS is now fluctuating between 30 and 40, which is pretty garbage. So, let's, uh, let's start improving that. That's going to be our working set. And that guy is just going a bit distractingly fast. Um, where are you getting that from? Foo main. Okay, so then it calls that with nil. Oh shit! Yes, I see why. Fuck me. I get it. Um, no, that's gonna be bad as well. Ah, nil, and we don't want to change it. I think these are going to be buggered now. Yeah, we're going to have loads of them. Okay, so abort. Abort. Every time I was recompiling it, it was setting direction back to nil, which we really didn't want. Uh, we want it to just... Um, so this T here says don't reevaluate after it's set up. We just want to use what was passed in uh, from here. So delf start. We got nothing. Let's spawn us some god. You found Jesus. Um, and then we're gonna hang test. So, that's our uh, 
That's our 3,000 actors. But I, I want I want on the order of like 30 to 40,000 actors running well, ideally. And so the first thing we're just going to do is start batching these up and doing um, instancing. Let's see what's going on over here. Ethan P. Morgan's asking, can you move back to the holy land of the UK? That is a forgotten land. <laughs> God has not graced that place in a while. Um... Did I really not compile Hacky Kill before I before I tested it? Oh well, we've got something that's working now for us. <laughs> mostly, they mostly come at night. Um, if you know, you can't wait. No, if if it's just Gen Sim, you can't intern it again. If it was just a um. If it was just a symbol in the nil package, then yeah, you should be able to recreate it, I think. Ethan B. Morgan's... Just... <laughs> Why is the new Holy Land, I presume? It's pretty fucking good over here, man. Don't know. It's pretty good. Right. So how do we want to do this? Draw actor. So right now we do this. So we spit up a draw call for each one of these, which draws a cube um, with the specific details. We want to pass as many of these things as possible in using an um, instance array. Let's go and look in the examples. Okay, we've got examples. Um, was it instance? Oh no, it's in the examples folder. Instance array triangles. So what we can do is when we are setting up our stream, um, when we're making the buffer stream, and it's not going to give me hints right now because I haven't loaded this project, um, we pass in a GPU array and this second array of positions, and then we, by consing it with one, it's basically saying, advance this um, by one on each instance, uh, unlike this, which is gonna be advanced by one on each vertex. So each invocation of the vertex shader is gonna get a new element from here, but each uh, instance is gonna get a new element from here. So each, basically each instance is gonna have all the same value from positions which is very cool. And what it means is we can design a, um, a struct which is gonna hold this data that we need. Um, so screen height and screen ratio, those things are applicable to all instances. They're not gonna change per instance, so we will leave them as uniforms. Transform, however, is gonna change per instance. Uh, the visual is an interesting one. The size we definitely can um, pack into um, the array. And the scale and offset. So it's uh really now. Oh, I see. Okay. So all of these guys are specific to each instance we need these to be um yeah per instance data but this guy is interesting because i am very sure we can't pass a sampler like a, a texture or anything like that um using these instance arrays what would be cool is if we have bindless textures then you can you, you can just use um unsigned integers as your texture handles and everything just becomes so much easier it's really fucking cool um, yeah, then you, then you don't have to bind them. You just, they're just there. It's really sweet. Ethan B. Morgan says, Mind if I ask a non-stream but programming related question? Go for it, sir. Well, 
But in the meantime, let's look at transform and size. We need these two. Um, and we need UV scale and UV offset. And we can def struct G and it's going to be um, per actor data. And I don't think we need anything else there like that. Will that work? Yep, apparently it is. I can remember my own syntax. Okay, so then we're going to make a buffer of those, like a GPU array of those. And we're just going to create it at the maximum possible size it can be. And then we'll only replace parts of it that we're actually using. Um, so let's say that our def bar max actor count is uh, 40,000. So that's the number I made up a couple of seconds ago. Um, Defarm alloc actor GPU array. Um, Actor, actor. All right, yeah, let's do that. Um, and say make a GPU array. Initial contents are going to be nil. Um, our element type is going to be the per actor data. And what else do we have? Dimensions. There we go. Dimensions are going to be the max actor count. And then. Ethan P. Morgan says, did any of you when you started ever be like, oh, shiny and wait a second, what? Oh, of like, of being like, oh, shiny and, and doing that constantly. I've been in a loop of, oh, I'll learn this and I'll stick with it until I master it or become efficient. But then I'm like, oh, shiny. Okay. So yeah, getting distracted by other projects. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I think we like, I have... I mean, part of the motivation, I'm like, I, I, I really want Keppel to exist, which is why I've been doing it for so long. But it is the first project I've stuck that long at. Like, I, I've never had a project that's lasted that long at all. So, um, yeah, I think it's kind of natural. But at the same time, there becomes there comes emotional burnout from just not... For me, at least, I, I get really motivated by... Like kind of like the personal dream of the project. I kind of keep it in two parts in my head. Like I have the practical side of it, what I'm really looking to learn and all yada, yada, yada. And then like the big picture implications where you dream how it's like, oh, it changed the world and all this kind of shit. Like as long as you can keep those separate as this is a kind of driving fantasy and this is this is what the reality is, then it's kind of okay. Um, like I love the idea of making Keppel just like the cool, like the nicest... Um, or at least most natural API bindings to GL there are. That would be really cool if I could say that. Like, like these are the this is like high watermark of what you can do as far as language integration with GL. I don't think that's that's there by any means. Uh, but it's it, it's a fun thing to say to yourself. That's just like a self motivating thing. But you don't put. It's very weird saying this on stream because you don't put that out there. You know, because that's just hubris and shittiness, and you don't. You don't need that. You've got... What's really happening is there's some hairy dude working in a language that doesn't really matter um, for to do GL, which people find quite painful. Um, and, and, like, again, in an environment that people don't want to use for making games, generally. So it's kind of meaningless. But, I don't know. It's fun. You make your own meaning, I guess. Um, Ethan B. Morgan say, I've never made anything significant in any language because I find myself... 
uh, finding something new and shiny. Well, this is, by the sound of it, this is the point where you've got tired of that. So remember that feeling. Because, and kind of search for projects where you feel them, um, like, the, the, the drive to not do that is going to be the annoyance in having done that so many times, in my mind. Like, um, you can use this frustration, basically, to drive doing something for longer. Um, there's something I feel about, like, when, um, when finding, like, because it's kind of a passion project, isn't it? Like, you want to search for something you'll stick with for a while because you want to have that internal drive, whether it comes from it being, a, like, doing good in the world or if it just means something to you. Uh, the, the only thing I found so far that's worked for me is like just reading really broadly all the time, looking at all the shiny stuff. I've got like gigabytes and gigabytes of papers where I just kind of look through, oh, this is all really interesting. You read really broadly. At some point, you're going to start gravitating to things that mean more to you just because if you've only got so many hours in a day, you'll end up reading more of something that entertains you and then you learn more about it. So you become a bit more knowledgeable in that field and you start having ideas once you've done it for a while, you start seeing the stuff that sucks in the field. You go like, oh, I love this thing, but, you know, that's that's garbage and everyone knows it is. And then at some point, you get to the place where you love a thing, you understand its problems, you have a good idea of how you might want to fix it, and then, because you love it, you'll want to fix it. And then, I don't know, that, that, that kind of starts that self-fulfilling feedback loop that is what I think passion is. I don't know. I'm waffling now. Ethan B. Morgan saying, yeah, I need to stick to a language and do it. I remember the fact that I've... Languages are just tools, man. It's um, it's really nice if you can find one. Like, I, I enjoy this one, so I, and I'm in my free... T I find this a nice place to work. So if I'm in my free time, yeah, I'm going to be probably doing Lisp because it's just a nice place to work. Um, but uh, in the end, it's, it's just a tool. Um... There are some languages. This thing, there's a lot of general purpose languages, though, so a lot of things are kind of on similar tiers for how ap applicable or they are to a given problem. Um, I mean, kind of like C++ is more applicable to games dev than, than Lisp is normally. I think there are ways of, like, just because you can get down to the hardware and what, you can shape the data that's doing things, your code, um, in a more pre predictable I guess way then you can common this but if you if you're shipping something oh man i could just go on about this for ages um yeah i don't know if the language is that super important it really depends it's that's going to end up being personal i guess because it's it's just the project is it'll either suggest a language to you or it, that one might have already been decided because it's a pre-existing project i don't know it's a really interesting space, though. It's one of the things that I end up thinking about a lot, and that's why I'm rambling, because it is very important. You, you, as you get on in like different stages in your life, you're going to look back and want to have felt value in what you do, because we've got a desperately finite number of years. Ethan um, Morgan says, we'll end it at that, because I think I've distracted you a bit too much. Not a problem, man. Not a problem at all. I love this shit. It's just, uh, yeah, I don't want this... <laughs> If I'm rambling too much, let me know. That's, I guess, is what I mean. Um, but it, it, you're you're asking the right question. Just use that feeling. Use that feeling to drive your future projects, I guess. Um, and find the, the thing again. This is a a thing that's worked for me. Doesn't necessarily apply to other people, but I'm very driven by stories. I love stories. It's the most important thing to me. So I find lots of stories from different people. Um, that will come back to me when I'm struggling on stuff. Just reminders, just like, hey, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 30. Um, I think in about 10 years, I'm gonna get to the place, like, I'll have studied the things I want to have studied to start working on some of the projects I really want to do, but I need to be significantly smarter to do. Um, but I, and then, so I have a bunch of stories, which is just of different people that I respect um, in different industries 
who didn't hit their stride until they were in their 40s or the 50s and stuff like that. And that relaxes me. Like, I just have a collection of stories that reminds me it's all right. This path has been walked. Like, it, it can work. And then you just have to keep walking. Um, but stories is what's keep me walking. Let's uh, in at this per actor. Actor data. Cool. There's our GPU array. This is what we're going to use for our, um, our actors. Now, is this the best way to do this? I think it might not be. So I think we've got to, we, we've really got to answer the, the uh, visual, the texture question, like now. Because the only reasonable thing to do is to say that we group by actor and then we we do one draw call per kind of actor, which means we have a separate um, do we have a separate actor array for each? Or do we have one GPU like we could have multiple GPU arrays, one for each kind of actor, and then we populate that and then we dispatch. But they would all have to be size 40,000 because you could arguably just have 40,000 of one kind. Or you could have 20,000 of one and 20,000 of another or 10, 20, 10 and stuff like this. So it would be cool if we can just keep this one actor and then we just loop through all of the um, actors in batches. So we batch the actors by kind on the CPU side and then when we write into the array, um, we can make a list. Like this is going to be our draw call list, our command list. Just saying, um, like kind is foo, and there's um, a thousand of them. Um, and the next one will be kind is bar, and there's fifty of them. This is going to end up being two draw calls. So I'll loop down here instead of looping over all the actors. We're going to loop over this list, and we're going to say get the visual uh, for a foo. And then um, do a thousand instance, uh, do, do one draw call with instancing set to a thousand. And we will have packed this GPU array. So the first thousand things are the data for the foo, and the next 50 things are the data for the bar, yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, that can work. It can work. Right. Um, So this um, current actor, next actors thing is no longer quite appropriate for us. What we're going to want instead is a collection of um, like pairs of these um, indexed by the kind of the actor. So we're going to do that. Um, we are going to ifun get current actors by type um, or we'll just do get actor arrays yeah let's do that let's do def struct um, Actor arrays, and we have current. We just call it actors. Yeah, actors current, actors next. Yeah, let's do that. Um, type is going to be an array of. Ah, we don't really need to give the type. It's going to be an array of t, and there's going to be some of them. I guess that at least tells it that uh, it's single dimensional, which might help in something. Um, no. Next. What's the, uh, what's the notation for this? Normally it's something like, so it's like simple array, single float, um, like this, like single float four would be a vec four. What am I doing wrong with this type? We don't have to quote it in here, surely. That would be garbage. Um, Devstruct. 
Yeah, it doesn't like that though. Oh, yeah, isn't the same? Oh, it's the first thing actually has to be the, like, an initialization form. So what we could do, actually, is just do this. That's it. I just forgot my syntax. One of those days. Right. So now we have, that's not what I thought I copied. There we go, we have a hash table. And when we get the actor arrays, what we'll do is we will go get hash by type on actors or set f get hash to be make actors. That should be it, I think. And then, so we can do get actors array for foo. And then we've got the struct. We can do that again, and we can check that those two objects are in fact equal, which they are, so we are getting the same one. That's cool. Okay, so. Spawn is now going to have to um, add itself into the correct actor array. There's a lot of things we're going to have to tweak, actually. But that's fine. That's what we have to do. Let's just start make working our way through it. We aren't going to get that much done today, I guess. Um, but that's... I kind of felt like it was going to be that when I started the stream, because my head's just... As it is every week, apparently, because I just don't... Tuesdays is when I hang out with my mates and we have, you know, a bunch of drinks and code and stuff like this. So, um, yeah, I'm always, always getting to sleep late that night, which is not ideal for these. <sighs> Here we go. That's a bit better. Zero out next actors. I don't see a place that that's used. Nope. Okay. Gone. That's one less thing to worry about. Oh, I guess that's where that used to be called. Um, ah, yes. Now we've got back to our spawn into case. If we can get away with having spawn actors always spawn into always be the same, it would really help us out. It's not here though. When we step the engine, that's really strange. We step the engine, but then we go into update actors. And in update actors, we set it to next. So what is it that's um writing to what's spawning outside of update actors there's a few things that could be doing that i guess so let's have a look the tasks this is the important bit this guy here tasks for next frame so we throw a bunch of things in there and the idea is then that um Sort of thing. We, when we recompile a an actor, we uh, throw a task into this list, and um, we have this in case one of the local variables in one of our actors 
creates another actor. We wanted to make sure it went into the right list. I think that's... I think if we just move this into the update actors section... Like, if we do this... Because doing these tasks isn't important for setting the resolution or clearing, but then we're already in update actors. So let's just start by moving it here. So exactly the same code behavior as before. Um, And so we've been looping across current actors and writing into next actors. I think if we just move these tasks into here, then, then we're okay. I think as long as it's done after this, we should be all right. Might mean we get a frames delay. That's kind of interesting. Yes, because the idea here is we're pushing the new actor into the current actor's array because that's what we're going to loop over. And But this is when we update the REPL link. So this is when a recompile of any form would have been done is here. Ah, uh, no, that's not correct. That's not correct. Is it weird? I don't really know, actually. Ooh, pardon me. This will be pumping messages from Swank. If we've done a control C, control C, that will be in that queue. So, yeah, maybe. That gets hairy and thready. And I think, basically, I think we can take this and do it here and get the same behavior as we've been having. Oh, wait a second now. And we will need to move this down to here. And then we loop across the current actors and draw them. Okay, so we loop across the current actors, current public state, next public state, and we swap the internal state for all of those, which would be correct as well. That's That's also fine. I think this is right, actually. And what that now means is that spawn into... Where are we? Yep, we can just grip from here. Is... Only set here to current actors. Okay. That also seems wrong, actually. In it actor should be You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to go with this assumption. And because we're not using that feature, we can clear that up. Um, and if it becomes an issue, then we're going to fix it another way rather than this. Because this was horrible anyway. Okay, so um, this is now set to next actors all the time. Um, so that's gone. This variable is gone. This place is gone. Spawn this into argument. I'm not actually sure where it's used now. Vector push extend. This shouldn't be necessary. This should always be next actors. Then we need to go and see who calls spawn, which is this. Passing in next actors. Um, and Wait, what?
Hold on there. I'm just hitting weird buttons now. Oh yeah, I need to find out who calls spawn. That was it. Okay. Spawn, recompile this, and then... Oh no, we can just remove this into... And then... Go here. We don't need to pass in necked actors. Go here. We've already taken it out of here. Recompile that. Good. Yes. Fine. I think we're good. Um... So hopefully spawn isn't fucked. <laughs> we will see. Actually, one thing we could do is just do um, hacky kill and uh, hacky test. There they all are. Well, the spawning from Repl is at least isn't broken. Um, so that's good. I think that became redundant the other week when we moved to the uh, Repl updating inside the update actors loop. So that's okay. But now we do need to go back to searching for the actors arrays. That's the only place that references it? That's oh yeah, that's finding current actors. Oh yeah, that's searching in the wrong folder. That's why. There we go. That's what I was expecting. So we're going to have a hash map um, containing, yeah, sets of array, like set of arrays of actors. So for this, we're actually going to want to search um, all of them. So we're going to do map hash um, actors. Key and value. Actually, we can just do, what's it, what is it, um, loop for, oh, I hate this, um, arrays being the, ugh, what is it, it's, it's horrible syntax, let's check it out, being the hash values of Yeah, I actually, I normally like the colon syntax in uh, loop. It's optional, but I use it because it just makes, like, color-wise, it just stands out a bit better. But it looks so gross in this. Um, and then there is some terminating form that I'm looking for. Is it sum? Count, counting sum, summing into type spec collects appending. There's like an every or always or something like this, and it's going to be in that family of clauses. We could do a, yeah. Come on, where are you? Basically, I want to, want to run this. So we're gonna do something like do. Um, we're gonna find, oh no, we're gonna say for, I don't know, x equals this thing. Um, we're gonna find the name we're looking for in the actor's current array. Um, of arrays. But the thing is, if this is 
If x is not nil, then we want to return that as the result. I just can't remember what it is. There's... There, I swear there was a clause for this. I mean, we could do while and like until in return, um, or like when. I'm not sure if we can do that actually. Let's try it. Loop for i in. Yeah. Then we say. Um, when even p i return i. Okay, so that's probably the way to do it. We can just do um, when x return x. That'll do. So that'll scan through uh, this hash table, hopefully. At the moment it will return nothing, so if we go, hey, Jeff, we'll get nil, but it doesn't crash. So it goes through the values in this hash table. It tries, it looks at the current um, array and it tries to find a name in there. And if not, keeps on searching through the others. That'll do. We don't guarantee an order, so blah, 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 but it's fine. Always, always, that was the one. Whoops. <laughs> Let's move that down there. Always, fuck, there it is. While, until, repeat, always. Never, there is, there is, ha. Huh. Okay, so that's just gonna return true. So actually this is the way we want it. Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks, Mike. Where are we at the moment? We've got half an hour left. We've got to do something. Um, okay, so... That's one of those down. Back to the list. Um, so we need to change our update actors loop. So now we're going to loop for actors ugh, being the hash values of actors do. Can I squeeze that up on that line? Yes, I can. Actors current actors. And let's just assume that that's okay, except next actors down here. We need to make, we need to do, that's not right. We need to do, oh, how does that work? Can we do this? No. Okay, um, actors next. Oh, there's another one up there. Fuck you! Actors. Ah, so this is now going to have to move inside, inside the machine, inside this guy. this. Okay, so we're going to loop through each of those um, sets. We're going to loop across the current actors. We're going to copy actor state and do all the same things we did before, assuming that this is all going to work correctly. And then we're going to copy that actor into the next array, which is what we were doing before. That's grand. So let's save that. We won't try and compile it yet because everything is going to... Actually, let's do it because it can break. That's fine. That's fucked. <laughs> yeah, I like that it actually didn't crash because there is there is stuff in there. So that's... that's 
boding well. Let's re redo this again. Let's um, go down here. And then we're going to need to do this. Actors, current actors. What are we doing inside here? We are swapping all of the public states of all the actors in that set. And then we want to swap actors current and actors next of actors that's also fine cool so that's updated what have we got left to do Okay, so update all existing actors. This is when we recompile an actor. It needs to go through and update all the ones of its kind. Now, this actually gets much simpler because before what we had to do was we would scan through all of the current actors and we would say when the type matches the type name. But now what we do is we go and we say get actor arrays for the type name. And then we do actors current for that set. We grab the data. We don't need to do this with this uh, when anymore. Um, and that is actually that. That's all. And what else we got? My stomach's rumbling, so it's either more or less coffee. Can't be more coffee. We're out. I'll repeat this because it's actually uh, it's good information. Sorted August, is, Sorted August is saying, in the REPL, how do you prevent it from processing a line when pressing return without removing the closing paren? And it's Control-J. Yes. As uh, Amfiano said. Control-J. Super handy. Also really useful when you're... Uh, say if you want to search for new line then defund uh, you just do control j there and that works um, and so let's say we wanted to remove all the double spaces in this so we can do new line new line and replace it with new line and then we could just go through doing this so control j is so helpful um, there's also what's the other thing if you want to search you can do control Q. Where is it? What is the? Yeah, you can do control. Yeah, if you're trying to search for a specific thing, um, one of the kind of special, like tab, for example, if you do search and then do control Q and then hit the tab key, it'll do the hat I, uh, which is your tab. And so then you could return, like replace tabs of spaces really easily as well. I don't know when I learned that, but it was, again, it's, I use that every single day. Right, where were we? We're here. Okay, so now we're in spawn. Yes, this is the meat of it. Um, we are spawning a kind of actor. And that's what we use to make the instance. Interesting. Oh, oh right. Yeah, okay. So I see why this is hack name, because we're just guaranteeing it's in this in this package for now. I don't know why we need that really. 
I don't think that's important, but fuck it, we'll, we'll live with it for now. So instead of next actors down here, we're just going to get our actors again, which is going to be get actors, actor arrays, sorry, for that specific type. And then we can push that around and just say actors next for actors. And we're getting there. Then we've got collision, which we still have to do, and we have to update test. Test is just our um, it's just our hacky stuff here, which is great. So we will be able to replace this simply with um, how do you empty a hash? Like ram hash um, removes a single key from a hash table. I think there was something that empties an entire hash table. Clear hash. There we go. <laughs> so we are down to the definitions of these variables, which we can just remove now. Then we're down to collision. Let's hope that collision isn't the thing that fucks up the whole plan. Uh, but it shouldn't be. Collision is actually going to be um, uh, very interesting very quickly when it comes to performance. So the test we're doing at the moment, we're doing no collision checks. And so we're testing purely just how many instances we can have. And we've got like our update logic is trivial as well. So that's negligible. So what we're saying is let's just check the rendering side of this. When do we max out on just draw calls? 3,000 was too many. So, and we want to get to 40,000. So that's all we're optimizing right now. But as soon as we throw collisions in there, which is scanning like all of the actors, um, we're going to get, performance will just die. We will go down to like half a frame a second. It's going to be dreadful. Um, that's why we're going to have to completely rewrite how collision checking is done. I would like to see if we can, we might do that on the GPU. We might just implement some kind of bucketing scheme. That was something we were going to talk about today, but I expect we'll move that to another week just because this stuff is taking time. And I'm going slow. Right. So we need a way of getting all of the actors. Hmm. How's the way of doing that? I think if I do this as a list, and I say uh, um, have we got Alexandria in actually? Alexandria Yes. Um hash table values. There we go. All actors. And then we're gonna go um we're going to map car across that, and we are going to get um, actors current. Okay. So basically, now we're collecting sets of actors that we want to um, look at. But this is going to be a list, I think. Actually, that's a good point. Our sets of actors, what type are they? So touching kind, or touching set. Our set is an across, which means it's an array. Okay, so it was expecting arrays. Okay, so this is now, um, our targets are always going to be lists of arrays. Perfect. So now we can come down here. And we just have to nest some of this. So we go loop for um, set in, um, what do we do? In target becomes targets. 
If symbol P target, ah, uh, wait, no. Need to change this. Oh, actually, no, this is easier. Holy shit, okay, right. Holy oh fuck, as the wise ones say. Um, ah, just undo this, undo it, undo it, undo it, undo it. We can get this back if we need it. Okay, we can't do that. If and target symbol P. Okay, so if it's not nil and it's a symbol, then we're gonna go by kinds. Then we come down into here and we go actors. Come on, get actor arrays for target. Um, and then we do actors current from actors. That's going to work. And then in here, we're going to say um, hmm. So they're either going to have passed in an array or they're going to have passed in nil. So. We can do an ensure list on it, but it's a bit. That's a bit annoying. Oh. But whatever, that'll work. So if it's nil, it will still be nil, and if it's something, then it will be um, a list of something. Now this becomes sets. Um, let sets be or um, actually let's just move that target down here. All sets, and then we can go and do our magic with uh, collecting the other things. So we go map car, um, actor, actors current. Yes. Oh, that's nice that it auto completed both sides of that. That was cool. Um, actors current, and this is the um, hash table values. Which is only in Alexandria. We should probably import that. We should definitely make sure RISD has Alexandria in. Okay. Ah. It's not used. Sets as defined but never used. Yes. Okay. Loop for set in sets do and ugh. we're gonna rewrite all of this anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Fiano is saying I would use a map hash if you're not creating a list to map over. Yeah, unfortunately in this case it's just like either they're passing in an array and then we're going to map over one array or we're going to extract everything from here. All of this is terrible. Um, but we'll replace it in coming episodes because this is just bad anyway. All of our collisions are co uh, checking with everything. Um, I mean, collision detection needs to be fast. Yes, we will be addressing this. I was going to apply it into um, hash table values and map car, which you've since removed. And I've just added back again, so your point still stands, sir. Um, but yes, it is garbage. But we're not going to worry about it too much, because it will be going away. 
So, we've changed a shit ton of stuff. I'm actually going to... Um, I, I want to build everything from, from scratch, so I'm just going to kill the session and um, start everything up again. And this is just a guarantee to myself that um, you guys are going to be able to build it. Because it's really easy for me to just have stuff in the session that um, ends up hanging around. We don't want those kind of problems. What does it mean? For he is the Kwisatz Satterakt. Right. Um, staff start. Okay, so God's around, apparently. So now if we look at actors, there is a hash table. If we inspect it, we find there is a kind called God. And there is nothing in it, though. So where did James go when he got spawned? That's a problem. <laughs> He's not here. Fook. Damn, it was all going so well. Right. Um, spawn God. Okay, John spawned. Oh, wait. What the fuck? There we go. That worked. So what happened? Was God spawned too soon? It's not nice, is it? Oh, who spawns God the first time? Um, crap. God. Here it is. It's an init. That's the wrong place. What we're going to do is we're going to put this in actors, and we'll actually put it in the update actor loop. Because we always need a god in this thing. Okay, so, so far, not completely fucked. Let's, uh... Put some color back over there. Awkward blue. Right, um, and then let's go to test. This is where things get nasty. What happens if we do... We don't need a spawn counter anymore. I don't know why that's there. What happens if we do this? Well, we've got some redefining stuff going on. But FPS is 60. Let's go print high. Make sure everything is running okay. Hi, 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 hi. Okay, so some updates are happening. That's nice. Um, we got a foo. Let's try spawning one of those. That's not good. It's almost like the first time it spawned, we just... No. Okay, so we've got a problem here. Spawn is doing the wrong thing. Damn. Maybe we did need that then. Ah, oh, okay. Hmm. Strange though, because we did spawn on God and got it to work. So why would spawn not be working for this particular one? Like when we call spawn, we can see that Michael has spawned. So, oops. So clearly that bit was working. This bit here. And we've even got, you know, we can see the object, so if we just do inspect the last thing, we can see this has been created properly. It's 
got its size, it's got its tile count, it's got probably its position in here. Yeah, position and rotation, they're all fine. Direction's nil. I mean, it's just as well it didn't, didn't work because it would have crashed on the direction being nil. Apparently, if I just change this to current for a second, let's see what happens. There he is. So. It is about which array we're being spawned into. Um, but does that matter? Can we move things around so it's not a problem? Ooh, we're doing this inside a loop as well, which is not a good idea. Yep, that was it. Okay, so it was just fuck-ups on that part. That's fine. Okay. Phew. So now for the uh, for the test, we should be able to do a hacky test and it all explodes. Okay. Oh yeah, we just haven't compiled it yet. Um, just continue. Do hacky test and hacky kill. Hack test. Okay, so now we've got uh, 3,002 actors knocking around. Um, our frame rate is taking a pounding. We're down at 40 frames a second, which is disgusting. Um, but we're in a great place because now we have hash tables which have batched our actors. So this one here has current and next. We've got a thousand of those, or how many? How, how long is this array? Um... Fill pointer at 3002. Yeah, good. That is what we expect. So we could call the draw call with instancing set to the length of that array. Um, and we know that all the uniforms are going to, all the visuals are going to be the same because the visual is always constant for, yeah, for this. That, that's going to be fine. Okay. So what have we got? We're at, we're at four minutes to 10. Um, so. Let's uh, let's not try and do anything too funky now. Um, uh, yeah, should be ready to um, do instancing. Sweet. And Fiano is saying we need a digital belter ring. That would actually be, you know, it, that's actually quite a good idea. Cool. So, we did okay. We, we got, it's another couple of hours that I've managed to roll by with not a lot of stuff happening, but we're in a better place than we were. Um,. Oh man, it's just really tempting. This is what's tricky, is like not doing this project during the week because I want to do everything on stream. Um, but that's again, like uh, I wanted, I, I really did want to do this on stream. So it makes sense to do it this way. What's next? Let's just have a quick look at um, what we will do next. So we will look at draw. So what we will do is instead of, where's draw? Um, we will, let's have a look. We're going to take this and we're going to move it outside of this loop. So for each, um, 
we're going to go through each actor and we're going to update. And when we update, we're going to write data into that um, GPU array, that big buffer that we were talking about. Um, and then we're going to use, then we're going to do a one draw call for all of the actors. So we'll pass in a bunch of information here. Because uh, it will actually be draw actor, um, actors of kind. And then we'll just say kind. Um, And yeah, then we'll do an, an instance draw call, which is really easy to do. And we'll have to just, yeah, we're just going to get a few details right. This is okay. But yeah, I won't try and do that. I, I was just musing a second ago. Like maybe we'll we'll keep the stream going and uh, and do more. But nah, I'm, I'm, it's not a good idea. This is a good place to finish. Cool. Right. So thank you very much for watching. Um... Next week, we'll do the actual instancing that we didn't do today, and then we'll talk about collisions. Um, and Viano is saying, to get 40,000, I have a feeling you're going to have to do batching too. Well, we are batching. We're going to be making like... Well, in this case, we'll be making two draw calls. No, one draw call, because we've only got one actor kind that's got a visual. Um, so there'll be one draw call with 40,000 instances. Um... If we have 10 different kinds of actor, we'll have 10 draw calls. Um, and there is going to be, we'll do, we'll have um, any actor that doesn't have a body is going to be, um, we're not going to call update on at all. So this, this whole loop here uh, won't be run if it's a static actor. So then all of the scenery ones disappear. Um, we can then do um, collision stuff. Actually, let's just talk about briefly about the collision because I did start a little late. Um, we need to find a way to check large numbers of objects against each other. And there's a number of strategies for doing this. Uh, one thing we can do is we can do a spatial hash. So we can take the position and we can hash it. And we can use the fact that uh, hash tables collide um, in our favor. So... We, we want anything in the same region to collide. Basically, we're trying to minimize the number of things we're checking against. Um, so we'll do spatial hashing so we can minimize the number of um, actors. So this actor would only have to check, you know, like these actors instead of all of these to see if there's a collision. Um, that's one thing we can do. I also would really like to look into what we can do on the GPU. Because obviously, if everything draws into a buffer, that's a map that says where things are. Um, so you can then look up into that and see if you've collided with anything. Now, I'm not entirely sure how we do that, whether it's kind of like in the fragment shader, you check to see if there's already something plotted. Like you look up in the texture to see if you would collide with something. And then you increment a, an atomic value in an SSBO or something like this. That would be really cool. I'm not really sure. Basically, we need to do a bunch of drawings. Um, right now, we talk about colliding with everything or a set of things. I think it makes a lot more sense to, um, to have some kind of collision mask. So we can say, hey, this thing has this collision mask. Now, in a way, we already do have a kind of mask, and we've been batching these things together. So we norm only want to say we want to check bullets, our bullets, against aliens, for example. So we could draw all the aliens to a buffer and um, we could use, say, the color data to store like a bit mask of who it is. So we can have one of the IDs of one of the aliens be stored in some way in that. And then we can look that up from our bullet and see if we've collided with anything and then we can bring that information back. Now, I'm not sure how that works yet. I'm guessing it'll be writing into SSBOs or if we're doing the lookups in the verdict shader, we can use transform feedback. But basically, we get to make this up. And we get to decide if we're going to have like, um, like a pixel-perfect collision by, by, again, using this uh, per-pixel checks. Or if we are going to, again, like lower the resolution and use it as a kind of, um, yeah, like, like again, like actually like a spatial hash. Um, I don't know. I've never done this before. But it feels like there's a lot of things we can look into. And the way that like is guaranteed to work, like has been tried and proved, and all that kind of shit, is just um, is spatial ha spatial hashing on the CPU side. So um, we can always do that, and that will make things a lot better. And then maybe maybe that'll be enough, or maybe it'll be a combination of a few things. So yeah, that's uh, that's where I am headspace wise on that. So we'll look at that 
another time. So next week, we'll finish this uh, the drawing uh, batching, and then we'll start talking about collisions. Cool. That's the lot. Thank you so much. Um, see you then. Ciao. Uh, go over to the right computer before I hit some buttons. Done.